Well, I, I lost my network connection when I was doing this uh, video segment. So uh, uh, the first part, it's not in two parts, the first part is already posted. And uh, what I'm going to be doing in the second part. Now, uh, where I stopped was here. I told you that uh, the other way of specifying the uh, this business of offset is uh, not to do it when, when in the meshing stage, but when you, you do it when you specify the 2D property. So to explain this, what I'm going to do is uh, I go back to my original part, which was right here, and uh, uh, everything that I did uh, prior to that is deleted. So I'm going to go to, the again, the advanced meshing tools and mesh it exactly the way I did uh, the, uh, the other, uh, in the other video segment. So, uh, uh, yep, we're doing static analysis. And we're going to do surface measure right there, surface measure. Select that, okay. And use the same size element that I did before, which is 0.5, that's fine. But uh, I will not use any offset, okay. So what I will be meshing is actually this surface that is not the middle surface. It's the one that I extracted from the bottom of the part, which say okay. And uh, my favorite term of mesh meshing it is to refer it as zapping it. It looks like there's a Z there, but it's really meshing the part. And we say OK. And exit. Notice that because I did not specify any offset, the surface that's being meshed is actually the wrong surface, but that's okay. I'll show you how to fix this. So uh, now we're going to go to now we're going to go to generative structure analysis. Okay. Uh, if you want, you can look at your mesh. So right-click mesh visualization. There we are. And if you want to see the part also, so uh, uh, show me the part. Hide and show, right? Right there, you can see the, uh, you see for a second. Show and hide. Right, right there, you can see that. You know what, I'm beginning to think that this is, this was a too fine a mesh. So let me go ahead and actually change the size of that. Uh, let me deactivate this. Go back to the surface measure. And uh, the size of the element, I'm going to use one, okay? Because this is a very fine mesh, everything uh, gets bogged down. Uh, that's fine. And zap it, or mesh it. Uh, that's more civilized. And exit. Now I go to my uh, uh, generative structure analysis, which I'm already there. Okay. Now if you want to look at your mesh, uh, activate the mesh, and this is the the wrong surface. Think about it as the wrong surface because the bottom surface is not the middle surface, and I did not offset it. And just to to make sure that uh, everything is what I want, let me show the part. There is the part. You can see that this is the surface, the bottom surface, which is not supposed to be the one that I'm meshing. Now deactivate this. Deactivate it. Okay, so now we have to specify the thickness of this. So we go to the 2D property. This is what you need for shell elements. You need this 2D property. You click on it. You select the, the surface and you put the actual thickness of the shell. Now, uh, 0.25, uh, uh, you put a total the point, uh, thickness of 0.5. So the shell thickness, that in that panel thickness was 0.5. Let me remind you, it was right here, right there, right there. The thickness of this gray part is 0.5. Okay, so I use the 0.5. Now there's an offset here. The question is, what does this offset mean? 
That means that although you mesh, you put your mesh on the wrong surface, when it comes to calculation, move that thing, move that thing by an appropriate amount so that in, internally it's placed at the, uh, at the middle, middle face. Now, if I put zero, now remember, remember this, this is a continuation of the previous problem, so I want to remind you that the direction of the join was up, Therefore, direction of the elements was down. And I want to tell the software that the middle surface is actually negative 0.25, which means in the upward direction from where the mesh sits now, so negative 0 0.25. So internally, pretend that this mesh that I created is actually shifted in the upward direction by 0 0.25. In other words, place that mesh on the middle surface that we're not accessing. So we say, okay. Nothing changes. In fact, if you see, if you say, show me the mesh, the mesh is still sits on that surface right here. You can see that. The mesh still sits on that surface. But the software knows that when it comes to calculation, it must take into account that this mesh, mesh should have been 0.25 above in the upward direction from where it sits right now. Okay, just to convince you that everything will try, this basically takes care of this takes care of this second way of fixing something that was wrong. Okay, uh, so uh, right there I did it. And just to convince you that everything works, works fine, although I didn't actually make a run for the first video segment, but I'm going to do that here. So I'm going to deactivate that. Uh, clamp the bottom, clamp the bottom of this, and put a pressure on that top face. I don't know, this was half an inch, uh, half an inch thick, and the total length here is about 48, uh, 48 inches. So uh, let me put a, uh, let me put a, uh, a 100 PSI on that face. Okay, uh, by the way, notice that the element direction is downward. Join was up. Element direction was down, so this is not the proper way of doing it. So I put a minus 100, and say okay. I did a I did a video segment earlier, which was talking about uh, this business of uh, offset uh, in the context of uh, uh, in a different context. So you can go and watch that if you want. But uh, anyway, so there we are. So uh, let's run it. Okay, and deflection, uh, there's a deflection shape, okay, let me change this thing to a different rendering, average ISO, material shading, and there we are. So uh, if you animate it, you can see that it's exactly doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Actually, uh, let me see. Yeah. Where is the animation? Right there. Yeah. So it's clamped at the bottom. The top is subjected to a downward pressure. So it moves down. Now, there is one last thing that I want to do. This basically takes care of the uh, the 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 segments that I wanted to do, but I want to show you something else. Uh, let me uh, deactivate this. Uh, let me deactivate that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to, I'm going to delete, delete this, uh, delete this, uh, this mesh that I created. Okay. I delete the mesh. Delete. Okay, good. So, uh, change the rendering to also delete the uh, property, the 2D property. I'm going to delete this. Okay. 
if you mesh this thing with triangular elements, either here or you go back to the advanced meshing tool, for example, that entire surface, you mesh, uh, mesh it, I'll put uh, one, uh, 0 0.5 inch, just like before. Uh, let me actually make this thing one inch parabolic. Okay, and you can look at your mesh. Okay, right there. See this? Now, if you go here, if you go to this element type, there is nowhere you can offset this thing like what we did with the advanced, uh, with the surface measure. The surface measure allowed you surface allowed you to offset this thing, physically move the location, but such an option is not available here. Okay, it's not available. So you have no choice. If you did this thing, is to specify the uh, if, if you specify the, uh, the the correct location of the uh, of the, of the the mesh by doing the 2D property. You have no choice. In the case of surface mesh, where you got a nice you know uh, for example rectangular uh, uh, rectangular element, then you could have, you have actually offset this thing physically to a different location. You can't do that in with these elements. I already mentioned this thing in the first two, the first segment of the uh, the present tutorial, but uh, just wanted to repeat that. All right. Good luck. That takes care of it.